Hi, and welcome to this short video on the Moodle formula question type. In this first of a series of videos, I'm going to introduce to you the random variables. Okay, so what are random variables? Well, before we begin, one important thing to mention is that you don't have to use random variables in order to utilize the formula's question type. So you could be building a static or non-algorithmic question and maybe using the formula's question type for just being able to build a multi-part question with ease. It's really up to you. But in any case, what are random variables? Well, random variables essentially allow a question to present to students using different variations. Different variations may be for numbers or context in the questions or entirely different answers perhaps to the same type of question being offered to your students. So, what are random variables? Well, random variables control the randomization for everything that's going to occur in the formula's question. And in this video, what I'm going to do is just quickly highlight what some of the key things about random variables as you're building them. And then in the latter part of the video, we're going to lead you through a step-by-step -step demo that you can follow along with and start to build random variables and really get a start to building a formula's question type. Okay, so step one in building a random variable? Well, you need to declare the variable itself. And a few notes about the declaration of a random variable is it is case sensitive. The second is that there's no spaces allowed. So if you need to have a short phrase or short sentence as your variable declaration, I'm going to recommend that you use camel case. I say camel case is nice. So what is camel case? Well, essentially, when you want to start a new word in a small phrase, you'd start that new word with a capital letter and then you can get rid of the space. This will allow the author to read the small phrase just like a normal sentence, but will trick the computer into thinking that it is all just one word because there's no spaces. Next, you can't start a random variable with a number. Next, you can't have any special symbols. So you can't use dollar sign, exclamation point, hashtags. You can't do things like that with variable declarations. You can, however, use the underscore symbol if you need to. And lastly, you can't reference other random variables. So as you're building your random variables, if you say have a variable called A, you can't then build a variable called B and include A as part of that variable. You can't reference other random variables. If you need to reference other random variables, you can do so using global variables, which we'll see later in a future video. Step two, you need to decide what that random variable is going to be. What is it that you want to randomize? So for example, you could select a number from a list. You could select a number from say a range of numbers. You could select a string from a list of strings, or you could select an array from a list of arrays. So a lot of people like to ask that are new to computers, what's an array? Well, an array is really just a list of numbers. So in this last example, what's happening here is there's a list, one, two, and three, three things in that list. There's a second list, four, five, six, and those three things, four, five, six, in that list. So if you're selecting an array, you're not just selecting one number in this case, you're selecting three numbers, either the numbers one, two, three, or the numbers four, five, six. So an array is really just a whole bunch of things, all in one bit of data for the computer. Step three, you need to call the variables into other areas of the question. So you can call the variables into question text. You can call the variables into global variables. You can call the variables into answers. That's the third thing. After you've built your random variable, you need to decide what you want to do with those random variables. Okay, so now that leads us to our demo section of this video, and we're going to lead you through how to actually create your very first formulas question type using random variables. Okay, so here we are within the Moodle question bank. Let's select create new question. Formulas question type. I'm going to start by naming my question. Now notice I'm naming my question delete dash so that I can easily identify the question later. I don't want this question to get inadvertently placed onto a student's quiz. And I do want to identify this question as kind of like a sandbox question so that I can delete it later. And if the question does become so great that I do want to release it to students, I can always come back and change the name later. 
So now to start, I wanna make sure that I complete all the required fields so that I can save the question as I go along. So you'll note that Moodle identifies the required parts with this exclamation point. So I have to complete those parts before I'm gonna be allowed to save the question. So I've completed the name, that's great. Under question text, I need to complete some text there. So I'm just gonna throw some random text in. Here's some text, great. That's good enough. That's gonna allow me to complete that required field. I'm now gonna go all the way to the bottom of the page where it says part one, expand that area, and I'll provide an answer to the question, like one, two, three. There we go. I've now completed all the required components of the formulas question type, so I can save this question now, and I can even preview it. So I'll save it, preview it, and there's my question. Here's some text, and I know my answer is one, two, three. There we go. Now let's go back up to the top and work on the random variables. So under the random variables, again, not a required section, but for our random variables, let's start creating some variables. So our first variable, we've declared it using A. Notice everything to the left of my equal sign is my variable name or variable declaration, and everything to the right is what I want that variable to actually be. So the syntax is actually quite simple. We're gonna use curly braces to identify this is what I want my variable to be, and we must end the line with a semicolon. Now in this case, I'm using a comma separated list, so a list of numbers one, two, and three, meaning Moodle is going to randomly select one of those three numbers, and it's gonna assign that to the variable called A. Okay, so moving right along, well, we have orange equals to five. Now, one thing that you're gonna take note on here if you try to go ahead and save this is Moodle's not going to allow you to save it. Why? Because Moodle does not allow you to declare a variable using only one item in this list. So for the purposes of testing, sometimes we want to temporarily make a question static so that numbers don't change and we can work an answer out with a calculator or on paper. So if that happens, you want to assign static variables. Moodle's not gonna allow you to do that unless you get creative. So one creative way to do that is to give Moodle a choice. Here you go, Moodle. You can select any one of the things from that list. And Moodle's going to be okay with that. It's given the choice of selecting five, 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 et cetera. You know what Moodle's going to select. It's gonna be able to make it so that you can work with the answer quite easy. Okay, so we go right along now. And we'll create another variable called B1. Now B1, using this syntax, separated by colons instead of commas, this is going to ask Moodle to select a number between a range of other numbers in a certain number of increments. So in this case, we're telling Moodle, select a number as small as one and as large as eight in increments of one. So Moodle could select the number one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight. Now notice it is inclusive of the endpoints, so Moodle can select one and Moodle can select eight as well. And so there's B1. Let's now make another random variable. So B capital underscore one. This is going to select a number from the range from 10 to 11 in steps of 0 0.01. Now what a lot of students tend to ask me is they tend to ask, well, what happens if I use the same declaration twice? Well, of course here, these are different declarations because Moodle is case sensitive. But if I was to make this be underscore one, I'd be using the same variable declaration twice. What will happen in that case? Well, you are allowed to do that, but what you should take note of is the algorithm reads from the top down. Meaning if you were to do this, whatever happens here will completely ignore or overwrite whatever happened here. So that's important to take note of, that it reads from the top down and it's gonna overwrite possible previous declarations of your variable. So I'm gonna call that B capital underscore one. Now, sometimes people will pick an increment like this, expecting it to display to students two decimal places. That doesn't always, of course, happen. Why, Bill? Because it's inclusive of 10 and 11. So like the number 10 is gonna be possibly pulled here. The number 11 is possibly pulled here. Those are not two decimal place numbers. And let's not forget that the number 10.1 is also in that range between 10 and 11. It's not two decimal places either. In other words, you have to start to get pretty creative with this and start to think, what are some of the possibilities? You can't just rely wholeheartedly and say increments of 0.01 and go, that's gonna be a two decimal number. That's not going to work. <clears throat> okay. So let's go right along. And 
Now, maybe we have even number equals two to 200 in steps of two. So this is gonna pull an even number, starting with the number two, incrementing by two, so the number two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, etc., all the way up to the number 200 is a possibility here for being assigned to this variable even number. Now we go to another one. Let's assign the variable traffic to either the string red, the string yellow, or the string green. So what you can do is use these quotation marks to identify a string and then put some context or text inside of those quotation marks and Moodle will work with that. Here, I've used three words. So Moodle will pull either the word red or the word yellow or the word green. Now, you certainly can put anything you want inside of these quotation marks and it's gonna treat it like a sentence or a string or a small phrase. So for example, if I was to add in bluish here, now I'll have that short phrase bluish green as one of the three possibilities that's gonna be assigned to the variable traffic. Okay, so now we've created some random variables. Let's now start to use those random variables in our text, and we can even use those random variables as part of our answer. So let's have a look. So underneath, here's some text. Let's type some text in. So Mark used the number A for A and the number B1 for B1, but then he decided the number B1 would also be a great addition. Here is my even number, even number, and here is my traffic color, traffic. So there's some text. So notice what I'm doing here with my syntax is I'm using curly braces around the variables that I've declared. So there's my capital A. So what happens is as Moodle reads this through, it says, hey, this person wants a variable declaration. There's my variable declared as A. Moodle's going to randomly pick a number. So if it randomly picks, say, the number two, it's going to replace this with the number two in my question text. And the same thing goes for B underscore one. It looks in your random variables and says, hey, there's B1. It's a number between one and eight. So for example, if it pulls the number six, it's gonna replace this part of my question text with the number six. There we go. So let's save that and have a look to see what this is doing. So I hit save and there are no errors. So I go to preview and there's my preview. So Mark used the number and it pulled in the number two in place of A and it pulled in the number seven in place of B underscore one. My traffic color, it's selected randomly from the list of three choices, it's selected red. And of course my answer to this question is still one, two, three. There we go. Now what if you want the answer to the question to be a random variable? Well, you can nicely do that. Let's show you how. So I go up to the top and here's my A. So maybe I want in my question text to read something like write the number A in the box below. So essentially what I want students to do is respond with whatever random number got pulled for A. Okay, so I go down to my part one, change my answer from one, two, three to capital A. I go ahead and save that. A preview. And it says, write the number something in the box below. So I write the number three in the box below. And it says it's correct. If I check it with any other number, of course, like the number 66, it's of course telling you that's wrong. You needed to write the number one in the box below. So that gives you a sense as to how you can start to use random variables in your question text, as well as your answers. Let's go on and learn more about random variables. So I go back up to my variables. Underneath traffic, I'm gonna create another random variable. This one's called non-zero int. Now notice here I'm combining multiple syntaxes. So I'm using that range as well as utilizing a comma separated list. So I'm combining syntaxes. Why you would do this? Well, it's gonna allow you to really target a certain type of random variable that you need. So in this case, maybe I wanna pull a random number between negative 10 and 10, but I don't want the number to be zero. Why? Well, adding zero to something is pretty uninteresting. Subtracting zero is pretty uninteresting. And dividing by zero, well, that could be catastrophic. 
At the end of the day, I want to combine some syntax to get smart here. So what Moodle is going to do is see the comma separated list and say, hey, I'm going to produce either this item or produce this item. And then it's going to say, well, what is this item? Well, this item is a number between negative 10 and negative 1 in steps of 1. So it's going to be some type of negative number between negative 1 and 10, negative 10. And on the right side, it's saying, hey, pick some positive number between 1 and 10. So I'm able to combine syntax in order to avoid the possibility of generating a 0 for this particular variable. <clears throat> okay, more syntax. Bad, 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 A equals this. So you said I could combine syntax. Let's see what happens here. So I'm saying the variable bad, bad, bad is equal to A, so whatever this was, plus a number from the range from 1 to 10. Now normally you can do this, but let's see what happens. If I save changes, I can see I get an error. Mm. Why do I get an error? Mm. Well, normally you can add and combine syntax like this, but what's causing us the issue is this big A. As we discovered earlier in this video, you can't reference priorly defined random variables as part of a random variable, and big A was prior defined. So that's not going to work well. Now the nice thing about Moodle is it's telling us specifically what the error is. Unlike a lot of other error messages in Moodle, like error messages that say, can't save this, and you're left wondering why, well this is actually telling you quite a bit. This is telling you that in line 8 of your algorithm, so there's line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there's line 8 of my algorithm. There's a variable called bad, 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 yeah, there is a variable called bad, bad, bad in line 8, that has a syntax error. So there's something wrong with how you've de defined that, that variable. Okay, so what's wrong? Well, as we said, we can't have big A. Now, you have two choices now. What you could do is just delete that line entirely or try to fix the error. Or a really neat programming thing is you can throw a hashtag in front and that's going to comment out the line. So typically hashtags would be really useful for you to provide comments to your code so that when you come back later you can read it and understand what is happening. So you might go something like this and say, below I will define the traffic colors. And it provides a nice comment to you as an author to know what was happening at that point in time. Now, in this case, down below here, this is just a bad line in the algorithm that I want Moodle to temporarily skip out on reading. So I'm simply just going to hashtag it out or comment it out so that Moodle doesn't read it. So I want you to notice now what will happen. I'll go ahead and save this. And you can see now there are no errors. It all runs through no problem at all. But what I want you to take note on is what happens if I try to use the variable bad, bad, bad. Well, in my question text, if I was to go curly brace, bad, 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 I want you to think about what will happen if I try to do that. Okay, well, really nothing should happen because, as I said, Moodle's just going to skip out on reading this line. The variable bad, bad, bad is then not declared. If you're ignoring this line, you don't see bad, bad, bad. So really nothing should happen. It should just display this text, bad, bad, bad. Let's have a look. We'll save those changes, preview it, and as you can see, it did exactly that. That variable was not declared, so it just displays exactly what you typed in. In this case, bad, bad, bad. The answer to our question says write the number one. Okay, so there we go. We get the idea. Okay, so now let's go up and learn a little bit more about these random variables. So on the next line down, underneath bad, 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 what we're going to do is have another line. And this line is going to be my array, 1, 2, 3, or 4, 5, 6. So what Moodle's doing here is it's either going to generate what's on the left of the comma or on the right of the comma. So on the left of the comma, you can see it's an array because it's built into square brackets. And that array is the number 1, 2, 3. Now notice this is not a single number, this is like an array of numbers. So it's not just going to pull the number 2, and it's not just going to pull the number 1, it's going to pull the entire set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, or it's going to go to the right side and pull the entire set of numbers, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so let's find out something more about arrays. Well, if you were to go in down below here and you were trying to reference your array in question text, so we go here is my array and curly brace my array. There we go. 
If we go ahead and we save this, save changes, the first thing to take note is there were no errors mentioned. So it read through that align without difficulty. So meaning that was good syntax and it properly defined that variable, all was working well. Okay. Now when I go to preview my question, you'll notice that eh, it doesn't look like anything happened. Where's my array? If it was defined properly with no error, something should display there. Well, the thing about arrays inside of Moodle is those arrays cannot be shown within question text. Even though Moodle has done something here and has assigned either this set of numbers or this set of numbers to that variable, Moodle is unable to display that in question text. So you might be thinking, well, what exactly is the point then of using arrays? Why would it let you do this? Well, the reason is, is because these arrays can then become super useful later in areas like your global variables or in other areas of your question. And we're going to see that in future videos. But it is important to note that if you're using arrays and you're building arrays within your random variable, you can't use those arrays and show them and display them within the question text itself. Okay. And so this concludes our video on random variables within the Moodle formulas question type.